Hi everybody, I was just doing an order or editing an order for a client and I did this edit and I thought, oh, that's quite pretty, maybe other people would like to see it. I know it's not maternity or newborn, but again, it's an outdoor location um, shoot and I do a lot of this editing, even in my maternity sessions, um, so I just thought I'd show you how I created this look. So this is... Um, I'll show you the before and after of this one. So that was the original. I can zoom in a little so you can see that. And that was the end. So it's a lot more dreamy, airy, um, very whimsical, ethereal even. So that's what we're going to create with this next photo. I'm just going to close. That was another one from yesterday. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to be working on this image. So I've done all the small tweaks in Lightroom, my exposure, my highlight, brought down my highlights, my shadows, got the white balance corrected, and now I'm going to right click edit in Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to um my editing is very haphazard. I keep trying things. If I like it, I'll leave it. If I don't like it, then I'll scrap it and try something else. You'll see that throughout this, but this at least might give you some techniques on, on what you can try. Right, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is come and give those highlights in your eyes a little bit more oomph. So I get my dodge tool. I've put it at around 20, 22%. I'm not specific with that. I probably might lower that to 11. Okay, so I'm just going to whoosh around the iris of her eye. I've got it on highlights um, because that actually brings out and makes the, the little catch lights brighter, which is what we're after. So just play with that until I like it. It looks a lot there, but as you zoom out, it doesn't look overdone. I do like sparkly eyes. Some people think that it might be overdone. It's a personal opinion. You do what you feel is right. Okay, so there we go. I've got that. I love the color and the bokeh in the background. I love the beautiful flowers in the foreground, but the colors are a bit lacking. So if I was going to be editing this for my client, I would go, hmm, what should I do? There's a bit of light coming in from the corner, so I might enhance that a little bit. I might bring out the colour from down here a little bit. So here goes. I might up the vibrance a touch. So here we go, before, after. I'm liking that. When I look at my subject, she's got a lot of red pigment in her skin along with uh, a little rash, a milk rash. So what I'll do is I'll go to my patch tool, go to the background layer. I'm going to duplicate that so I'm not damaging that layer in any way. I can always go back to that layer if I need to. So I'm going to clean up her milk rash here because bringing out the vibrance has brought the red out a little bit more. So I'm, again, on the patch tool. Circling and finding a clean spot of skin. You can. Do, this is great for babies as well. I do this on the babies with their red redness and all their milk spots that they get after birth. There we go. So I've cleaned a lot of that up. Just a couple more to go. I'm really rough with this, honestly. There is no. I'm just rough. <laughs> I'm not meticulous. I'm meticulous in how I make sure that I get it all, but I'm not meticulous in how I select the area. All right, and we've got this little bit of skin or whatever that happens to be here. So I'm just going to, we want to keep the shape of the nose. Let's see what that does. I'm going to find that little bump, blend it a little bit. Just blending it until we're, what have I just clicked? Oh, I blurred it. Sorry, everyone. There we go. So you can't see. Um, there's something here bothering me. Got these little ones. I'm not even sure if you'll be able to see this on the screen capture that I'm doing um, because they are very, very faded. It's not a big deal. All right. Okay, so we've done that. Um, her skin has a green cast from all the greenery around her. I've actually made my own action. To remove green cast but I do not want anyone to ask me for this action 
because you're going to create one yourself or do it manually. The only reason I have this action is because I do it, use it, um, I was doing this application so much that it's quicker for me just to have this action. But all the action really is, is I will go, hang on, so it's a selection, um, selective color layout, yeah. All right, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to show you what I do. I go to adjustment layers, selective color. I choose yellow from the drop down menu. And then I up the cyan. Sometimes I even up the blacks. I remove, oh sorry, when I say up, I shouldn't say up. I'm making it into the negative numbers, sorry. Um, I bring the yellow down. And I'll leave leave the magenta. It got, I mean, these are very uh, specific to the photo that you're trying to fix. So if I remove that, her face is a lot. What we're looking for is we want to make it more magenta, um, because that's the opposite of the green. Okay, so I've got. I think that's pretty much removed all of the all of the green. So now I'm going to go up to my mask. I'm going to press Control I to invert it so that I can paint it on only the areas that are required. Obviously, this is a green photo, so I don't want it out of all of the greenery. I just want it off her face. So, low brush, just click on there. Check her hand, her skin. Yep. And that's done. So I'll show you, I, again, I don't know if the screen capture will allow you to see this, but I'll go, see her face, it is brightened, but it's a little bit more pink as well. Um, I might bring up the magenta with the positive number on the right, and that to me is just perfect. Before, after. All right, so next I like to shoot through things to create depth of field in my photos and I love blur so what I'm going to do next is create that effect I will grab my brush I will select a color that's in the photo and um, so let's go with let's go with a bit of green on this side a bit of green I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to Actually, I'll leave that alone for now. I'm on a low, low opacity. I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger. And I'm just going to click on that a couple of times over there. I'll click on my pink. Maybe make it a little bit pinkier. For here. And do that. A bit more green. I will brush over there. So that's just given it a bit of a creamy, creamy look. Now this is where I just get experimental. So I might show you what to do and then go, no, nah, don't like it and remove it. So I might try a photo filter to warm it up. Mm, nope. Oh, no, I, I'm preferring the greens. Um, so I'm going to remove that. I might try a beautiful sun ray coming from this top corner. How I create those is I go to select um, adjustment layers, gradient. I'm going to put it on an angle. I will go here. I'll make that white. Then I'll create another bit. And I'll put some orange to create the sun color. And I'll make this one white again. All right, so the smoothness is 100%. I know that looks funny at the moment. I'll click OK. I want it to be radial, not linear. I'm going to up the scale a lot. And I'm going to click OK. Now, obviously, I don't want the sunburst to come straight from the middle. So I've got my arrow selected here. I'm going to double click that. And I'm just going to drag it. Ta-da, look at that, how amazing. We can 
make it a bit bigger, I can bring it down a little bit. Then I'm going to make the blending mode screen. Now obviously that's very hazy. I'm going to brush some of that off her face. Just make my brush smaller. With a low opacity again, we're just going to start removing it from her. It's probably a bit too much haze in my opinion, so I'm just going to reduce the opacity. There we go. Now with that vibrance that I had before, I'm actually going to try again. I might take this away, I'm not sure, I'm just playing at the moment. Yeah, loving that. Boosted that vibrance just that bit. So this is without the haze, this is with the haze. Um, really liking that overall picture. Um, right, what else? I think I might blur a little bit just in this corner a little bit more. So under all of those layers, I'm going to create a new layer, put it to soft light maybe. I'm going to get my select a green colour that's there, increase my brush, lower opacity. By the way, I always have my hardness at zero unless it's something specific. I'm going to really click over that. Soft light's not working. I might try screen. Yeah. So now it kind of looks like I've shot through a leaf. And I'll do the same over here again. I love depth of field. I love creating a 3D effect with my photos. I always have a foreground, middle ground where my subject is, and a background. And I think it creates a beautiful effect in all the photos. Makes them very, very um, 3D. Um, okay. I'm just going to check. I love that. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stamp of my photo on a new layer. And I do this by on a, I don't know what it is on a Mac, I'm sorry. On my PC, it's Control Alt. No, hang on. I do it so automatically. Now I'm conscious of what I'm doing. No. Okay. Image, where is it? See, I don't normally, I've forgotten what it was because I've thought about it too much. No, it's a stamp. Go to my top layer. Nope, okay, I've completely gone blank. What I'll do, I don't normally do this, I'll just flatten it. Then I will create a duplicate, multiply. That brings out a lot more um, contrast in the photo. I'll drill that down. I'll just bring down that opacity. I will create a mask, black brush, and brush it off her. And where that light's coming from. So you can have the really bright and airy, you can have the darker. Um, I actually like something in between those two. Yeah, that's it. I'm just going to bring up that opacity to 100 so that I can really make sure it's off her face and off her. Voila, okay. Um, I don't do this to anybody's skin other than babies. I am going to blur her face. Um, her skin a little bit. Why can't I stamp? All those people out there that know how to do it, you're going, why did you just press these buttons? It's like this. And for the life of me, I just can't remember what to do and I can't find where to do it. In the I will come back to that. All right, so again, I'm going to flatten my image, which I don't normally do, and it's naughty and you're not allowed to do it. When I get the time, when I get the picture stamp shortcut, I will tell you how to do it. All right, so I'm going to... Just blend. I've got a feather of 20%. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Just really gentle. It's just to 
just blend her, her colours together because she was quite rashy. And she had been crying because her big brother knocked her over. So it's just to blend and give her a little bit more of a smooth baby skin look. Again, do not do this to anyone other than babies. It's only babies that have this really beautiful, soft, blended, perfect skin. Okay, now I'm, I might do a little bit more here. Okay. I will now just check her skin a little bit. I'm going to go to reds with my selective colour adjustment layer. I'm going to bring Let me just have a look. Oh, I'm thinking I like that. So I'm going to go Control I to invert my mask. Go with a white brush down here. Make my brush a little smaller. And all I've done is I've brightened the reds. So I've brought them up a little bit. And that creates a little bit more of a creamy skin texture. See that was it before. She looked a bit dull, a bit, um, bit red and a bit grey. By bringing it up, it's just giving her a little bit more brightness to her face. I'm pretty much finished with this photo. I'm going to now continue. This is when you're allowed to flatten. Normally you should save as a PSD with all your layers ready. Um, but for sake of time, I'm going to flatten my image and save. So I go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. I always go to the eye and I back out about 50% so I can see the difference. I think that's a little bit too much sharpening, so I'm going to bring this down a little bit. The, I can't give you specific instructions on how to sharpen because every single photo is different. So you actually have to look. I will show you what over sharpening does. That is too, too sharpened. Um, you'll see around the edges. You can, it's just too, um, you end up having like a white around your edges. See that little, like that's without and that's with. And also, so you end up with a white line on one side and a black line on the other. And it looks fake and it looks too much. So I'm going to bring this right down to about two. Yeah, just so there's a little bit of a sparkle. Her edges are a little bit more defined. Her hair looks beautiful and sharp. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to click OK. Then I file, save as. I have an order folder. I go to JPEG. I click OK and I bring this to 10. I've got baseline standard. And then I click OK and I am done. Um, if you've got any questions, just post a question underneath, underneath this. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Um, and I will bring you my next editing tutorial soon. Thank you.